Welcome to Snap Revise. We are here to help you with your A-levels and for this video we're going to talk about mock exams, tips on how to prepare, what sort of revision you can be doing at the last minute to make it feel a little bit less stressful. If you are an A-level or a GCSE student then you will have probably already done some mock exams so you should be aware of what's expected from you and how you can roughly prepare for these. You should also be at a stage in your revision where you've covered a lot of the course content and have hopefully done um, a lot of exam preparation. If we've learned anything from the past two years it's that we need to be prepared for whatever kind of assessment we may need to go through for our A-levels and GCSEs and central to preparation is doing your revision and exam practice. That said if you are wanting to pick up some quick last minute tips for mock exam revision then keep watching. This video will be split down into how to manage your time in the lead up to your exam, what sorts of revision techniques you should be using and also how to manage your stress if you are panic revising because you haven't covered the content beforehand. However, before we get into the video, I do want to quickly talk about our social media. Um, all of the information is on screen here. We post daily on TikTok and on Instagram with revision points and lots of tips and tricks on how to do well in your exams. So if you want this daily reminder on your social media feed, then please do give us a follow. Don't forget to also subscribe to the Snap Revise channel and give any videos that you find useful a like. It's really helpful for us to know what's working for you and what other types of content you might want to see. Okay, so let's talk about your schedule. In the lead up to your exam, you want to be making the most of what precious time you have available to you before you sit that final paper. The first thing you can do, which is very easy, is to wake up a little bit earlier than you normally do. I would aim for an hour earlier, depending on what time you normally wake up and what other tasks you need to fit into your morning before going to school. When you wake up, you also want to avoid using your phone. This really does set the tone for the day. Um, it gives you some discipline and allows you to focus your concentration on the revision that you have to do. Instead, when you wake up, try getting up and doing some stretches, um, drinking a glass of water, reading a little bit of a book or going over some revision material that you want to go over on that day. Um, anything that just isn't going on your phone. What we also want to do first thing in the morning is to write down our aims for the day. Try to include everything you need to get done in that day as well as the subjects that you want to revise. Um, this helps us to get everything out of our brain um, and onto paper. It's a great stress reduction technique and it is also fantastic for forming your revision plan in the time building up to your exam. Make sure that one of your tasks for the day is packing your school bag um, and make sure you write specifically what you need to pack so that you have all of your revision content with you um, when you're at school or wherever you go to do your work. Once you have your tasks down, then identify the easy wins. What jobs can you do in five minutes or less? An example of this could be packing your bag or replying to an email, just anything that you can tick off straight away and get out of the way uh, for the rest of the day. Ticking these items off your to-do list will get you feeling motivated and really prime you for some of the larger tasks that you need to do. With these smaller tasks out the way, we can then look at the rest of the day, what time we have available and what tasks we need to do. Depending on how close to the exam you are, you may have more or less time to do a revision, but at this point, we really need to be flexible and just work with what we have available. If you are preparing for an exam that you have tomorrow, then I would recommend that the whole of today is spent revising for that subject. Um, it's the last time you have, so make the most of it. Write down what time you're going to do your revision session, as well as set a specific target for the session. So whether that's to do um, a certain past paper or go over a certain topic within the subject that you have have the exam on um, and then make sure that you stick to this. With your day now planned out, we need to be smart with how we use this time. Just reading through your notes isn't going to cut it, especially if you are feeling so, so stressed because all of that stress is just going to fog up your mind and nothing will go in. Firstly, we want to be removing distractions from these sessions. So your phone, um, your friends, if you find that revising with your friends um, is very distracting, then make sure you go somewhere silent. Um, to do some individual study. Alternatively, if you find that working in groups is helpful for your revision, then do that. Just whatever works best for you, we need to do in this time you have. I'd recommend reviewing one subject at a time. This is less stressful. And we also want to be looking at summaries of content rather than going into our much more detailed notes that we've taken throughout the course. If you haven't made summaries of the topic, then use the specification because this is basically um, a full summary document with all of the key ideas that you need to be 
absolutely nailing down before your exam. Spend 20 minutes to half an hour going through these summaries and make sure that you're understanding the summary and can recall some information beyond the summary that you're reading. If you're reading something and thinking, I really don't understand what this topic is, then this identifies a gap in your knowledge that you need to work on in the revision sessions you have planned. If there is a certain subject or a certain topic that you constantly find hard to recall for whatever reason, it just won't stick in your brain, then you might want to employ some memory tricks here. For example, mnemonics, linking concepts across the specification in your mind, um, talking out loud about the topic. This links to the Feynman technique, which I talk about in this video just up here. Basically, this is being able to describe a subject concisely and simply, but with a good core foundation knowledge. So if anybody asked you a question about that topic, you could answer it. So part of the revision technique is also taking breaks from your revision so that when you do the active recall, it is a little bit more challenging. So for example, you could spend half an hour reviewing your subject content and then take a 15 minute break where you go and get a drink um, have something to eat just have a break from looking at your work and then returning to do some active recall practice um, and the best practice you can do in this situation is past paper questions in the case of last minute revision doing as many past paper questions as possible um, is going to be really key to helping you feel prepared for the mock exam Past papers are basically mock exams, so as many of these as you can do in a low stress environment, um, the less stressed you should be feeling when you sit the actual mock exam because you've been there before, you've done past paper questions and you're familiar with how it's all laid out. In your last minute practice papers, try to do these times so that they are like real mock exams. This helps you set a pace for how quickly you need to be working through the questions, lets you know how long you can spend on each depending on how many marks are available. Try to be calm as you approach each question question both in your practice paper and in the actual mock itself if you can't answer it in that moment then keep going and come back to the question later on at the end highlight where you struggled to answer the question and try and identify why you struggled to answer this question is it because you're not familiar with this question style did you not hit all of those mark points um, or is it the topic itself you just don't know enough about the topic to write the answer that the exam board was looking for pay close attention to the mark scheme um, see what your exam board likes in terms of responses based on the command word that they've used and just make sure that you are remembering that and nailing that when you come to your mock. So for the final part of this video, I'm going to talk to you about stress management. This is something that's super important during mock exams and during your um, student experience as a whole because stress can really, really affect your health. Doing past paper questions in the time running up to your exam should help to reduce the stress you feel in the exam. Um, it gives you some familiarity as well as planning out the time you have available. I always find that when I'm in a stressful situation and I am constrained on time, being able to plan out that time and what I doing it really um, is comforting it puts you back in control of the situation if you find that these techniques so far aren't enough to bring down the stress that you're feeling then I can highly recommend doing some breath work taking deep breaths and learning how we can use our breath to center ourselves is a really powerful tool not just for your exams and for being a student but for life going forward it's really great if we can find ways that bring down our stress almost instantly a very quick and easy technique that you can do is square breathing or box breathing. Um, all you do is inhale deeply for four seconds, hold that breath for four seconds, exhale for four seconds, and then hold the exhale for four seconds and repeat the whole process. Um, there are some YouTube videos that show like a ball moving around the edge of a box as you breathe, which is quite calming. Um, and really helps you to understand why the technique is called the box technique. This is something you can do just before the exam, in the exam, whenever you're feeling stressed. And if you find that this works, then you might want to have a look at the Wim Hof method. This is a little bit more intense when it comes to breath work, but with daily practice of the Wim Hof breathing method, um, it has shown to convey so many benefits to your well-being and to your immune system and just general health as a whole. Um, I'll pop a link in the description about the Wim Hof method because uh, I think it's one that people should use a lot more often uh, than we do. Finally, part of your stress management should be managing your rest. So like when we were planning out our revision sessions and we were building in those 15 minute breaks, you also need to make sure that you're taking longer breaks and making sure that your body is as rested as it can be, especially during exam season. 
Key to this is making sure that you're getting enough sleep. Sleep is restorative and it helps our brain function at its best. When we're tired, we have a much reduced attention span and an inhibited ability to actively recall information, which is an absolute nightmare if you're sitting exams. Teenagers need eight to 10 hours sleep a night, so make sure that you have a suitable bedtime and that you really do take your sleep seriously. What I really want you to take away from this video is that preparation is key. Take care of your mental and physical health through managing stress and make sure that you are getting enough sleep. It is so, so important. And finally, learn from this experience. If you are feeling super stressed out because you haven't done any revision and you found yourself with an exam in two or three days that you just simply aren't prepared for, make sure you're not in this situation next time. <laughs> Stay on top of your revision and make sure that you're doing exam practice, timed exam papers, tons of past paper questions, all of these are going to leave you feeling much stronger in the next round of exams. For some more ideas on effective revision techniques, you can click this video just here and to subscribe to the Snap Revise channel so that you keep up to date with all of our posts about A-levels, you can click just here. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.